University of Florida entomologist Michael Rogers remembers the text message in 2005 that told him citrus greening had been detected in Florida, the first time the devastating plant disease, also known as Huang Longbing, or HLB, had been found in the United States. That was a, a day that people probably remember very well because we've all known that was the, the worst disease worldwide of citrus. I remember sitting in a, in a meeting and getting a text said, hey, you know, it's here, HLB. I was like, really? Because we knew it was going to change how we did things. And it did. In the intervening years, citrus greening has slashed productivity in all of Florida's primary citrus regions. And it's not just oranges that are affected. Grapefruit, tangerine, and other citrus trees are also damaged and ultimately killed by the bacterial disease which is spread via the Asian citrus psyllid, a non-native insect measuring just four millimeters. The bacterium attacks the plant's vascular system, preventing the fruit from ripening and eventually killing the tree. When we first got greening back in 2005, about 2006, uh, I think a lot of us were in a little bit of denial about being able to manage the pest and the disease. Um, and, and things got pretty serious pretty fast. It's been, it's been pretty devastating. As diseased groves have been abandoned or torn up, the land dedicated to citrus production has declined 40% over the last decade, dropping to 435,300 acres as of 2016. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the current orange harvest, projected to yield 71 million 90-pound boxes, would be the smallest in the state in 66 years. In the decade before the arrival of citrus greening, Florida orange growers typically produced more than 200 million boxes of the fruit annually. The estimated value of all Florida citrus production has dropped 40% from $1.8 billion in 2008 to $1.1 billion in 2016. And as citrus acres disappeared, the number of jobs supported by the state's $10 billion citrus industry shrank. A study by the University of Florida estimated the state lost 18% of citrus-related jobs between 2007 and 2013. In many cases, there aren't as many of those folks out there anymore because there's just not enough fruit to support those jobs. And so um, it can be very, very devastating to, to communities, especially in, in uh, the growing regions of Florida, that depend on agriculture as a, an economic driving force for, for revenue. Arcadia, Florida, a town of 7,600, is in the state's second most productive citrus county, DeSoto, and has suffered from the spread of citrus greening. Mayor Judy Wirtz Strickland finds it difficult to watch the decline of an industry so central to the area's identity. With fewer workers, they spend less money in the stores downtown, especially the grocery stores. Citrus has been a part of this community um, since, ever since I can remember, and I would hate to see it go away. Many producers with smaller operations have had to give up, including some who were third or fourth generation orange or grapefruit growers. Chris Strickland of Alturas, Florida, had to knock down the orange grove he bought in 2015 from a neighbor. Strickland knew the 80-acre grove was infected, but had hoped to harvest parts of it for a few more years. It was heart-wrenching to, to push this grove. But I also understood that the grove owners around me that have spent just tremendous amounts of money to save their groves were not being benefited by a dead grove that was actually harboring a disease that needed to be, it needed to be gone. Strickland plans to replant the grove, knowing the trees will eventually become infected. However, he's hoping someone finds an answer sooner rather than later. The federal government has designated quarantine areas to help prevent the spread of both the Asian citrus psyllid and the disease itself. And where the disease has already progressed, it is providing money to help growers replant after they tear out a diseased grove. According to Florida citrus producers, Growers have directed $27 million from a citrus box tax over the past decade to search for ways to combat citrus greening. During the past eight years, USDA has invested more than $400 million in a search for answers, much in the form of grants to scientists. But despite the efforts of more than 100 researchers, 
a cure has yet to be found. There is some work that's ongoing looking at ways to maybe not reverse, but try to stabilize trees and keep them healthy and uh, as healthy and productive as possible despite the fact that they're infected with the pathogen. Those strategies include one approach where the trees are steamed to temporarily kill the bacteria. Growers have also attempted to synchronize pesticide application to prevent the insect from just moving to the grove next door. Some citrus industry officials are optimistic that several varieties of mandarin orange trees show greater tolerance, though not resistance, to the disease. Florida growers, who have largely focused on oranges used to make orange juice, are hoping for a similar find in a juice variety. Citrus greening has now been detected in all other major U.S. citrus producing states. So far, the disease has been less widespread outside of Florida. Other countries and states are watching Florida, hoping for an answer. We haven't found the happy ending yet, um, but we're working as hard as we can to get there. We've got the firepower to continue the fight, and uh, I think that we will eventually win. Uh, it's just how long folks will stick with us and how long folks can stick it out in these groves.